Welcome, I'm Lori, and I want to thank you for joining us for our kids' message. The month of December, we are focusing on the anticipation of Christmas. You know, kids are waiting to open their presents, parents are waiting to finish shopping, and we're all waiting to spend some much needed time with the ones we love the most. With the busyness of the season, it's easy to forget why we celebrate in the first place. The first Christmas, God's people were waiting for a Savior. They were waiting for the Messiah to come, the Savior of the world. That's why we use Advent calendars. It's the daily reminder to focus on a God who loved us so much that He sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. This December, we're taking the whole month to celebrate Christmas and God's greatest gift to us, Jesus. It is crucial that while we shine a spotlight this month on the countdown to Christmas, that we remember why we have it in the first place. Our memory verse this month will be Luke 2, 11, that says today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. This Christmas, we'd love for you to take the next step and connect at least one time in person here at Northside. If you can do more, that's great. Our services are at 8, 9.30, and 11. Be sure also to make sure you attend small groups with Kids Ministry here at 9.30 or 11. We will have three Christmas Eve service opportunities, 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. And we invite you to join us as we celebrate as a congregation here at Northside. We encourage you to continue to engage at home like you're doing now through this video and our Family Matters at northside.org website. At this website, you will find the materials that go along with the teaching sessions and age-specific activities. Perhaps another option for you would be to invite your friends over for a watch party or encourage your neighbors to join this conversation as well. The important thing is to connect. Connect with others and connect with God during this new season of life for each of us. Well, the moment you've been waiting on has arrived and it's time for our kids' message. So grab your Bible because here comes Pastor David. Well, hey guys, welcome back. Christmas is over. This is the last Sunday in December. It's the last Sunday of the year, and I want to take a special moment to, to just talk to you about the things in life and, and how things go and what things make us worry. I know that I'm a person that worries, and so this message might just be for me, but I hope you get a chance to hear something that works for you too. You know, when we are worried, we might respond with fear or stress, but we can also respond with peace. Um, Jesus came to calm the storm in our hearts. Jesus came to give us peace. He came to bring peace on the earth. And in Luke 2, we find that there's some shepherds who were on a hill. And these shepherds are going to have their night interrupted. But listen to what the Bible says as I read to you out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. Um, verse 8. <laughs> And there were shepherds living out in the field thereby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign unto you. We'll find the baby wrapped in cloths, laying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared, and the angel was praising God and singing glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to whom God's favor rests. You know, there's a bright light that appears. I, I can't imagine what that would look like. I, I know that it would be like a helicopter, you know, when, we, when we're driving around at night and it's dark, and you see a helicopter and they shine the spotlight down on the ground, I mean, that's really bright, but, but what was that like? What was it like to be in the middle of a dark field and all of a sudden there's this big, huge light from heaven? That's got to be a little 
discomforting. I mean, it's got to be a little bit scary. And then I think on top of that, what happens is, is there's a voice from heaven. And, and I don't know about you, but an angel speaking from heaven has got to be something you don't hear every day. And I'm supposing that that's probably something very significant in their life. Something that they'll say from this point forward, you ain't going to believe what happened. And I think that that's probably what happened to them. And it's got to be a little bit scary. And then finally, also, it says that a multitude of heavenly hosts appears. But their response is very different than to be so super afraid. That's why I want to take just a second here. I want to take a break. But when I come back, I want to tell you about what the response is when they see a bright light, they see angels, and all of a sudden more hosts appear. Hey, we're like you. We're getting ready to pack up the Christmas decorations. We're getting ready to put it away because 2020 is coming to a close. And we're ready for 2020 to be out. But just like you, we're looking forward for a new year. 2021 can be more fun. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a lot of great things. 2020 saw us not have camp, saw us have church in a different way, but you know what? We were able to overcome it. We encourage you to be part of the transition. Be part of 2021 at Northside. We're gonna have a great time. We look forward to being there with you. Well, I have to be in there with you. Well guys, make sure you like and share. We've been showing the, the commercials to have fun with you. I hope that you have something you set apart for Jesus this year as we come to the last Sunday of the year. And, and then just please, you know, set aside a, a couple of things to set your New Year's resolution for what you're gonna do. Maybe you're gonna read the Bible through. Maybe you're gonna spend more time helping others. Maybe you're gonna bring some food to feed some hungry people. But I do want you to do something for Jesus this season. Set some goals for yourself. When you think about the story of the heavenly host appearing and the bright light and, and, and angel singing, is the first thought that comes to your mind peace? I don't know that it's what I would think of first. And, and so I gotta ask, what does peace mean to you? Um, does peace mean an absence of conflict? Does peace mean that everything is still? Does peace mean that everything is calm? I, I think sometimes there's not really a lot of time for things to be real calm and still. Without peace, we feel stress and anxiety and worry. It, there's an old saying, if you know Jesus, you know peace. But if you don't have Jesus, know Jesus, then there will be no peace. And I think that's so true because, because if without Jesus, there's not peace in our lives. To have peace, we have to have trust. And we can trust God no matter what. Well, but that's really easy to say, but it's hard to do. How do you trust God when things don't go your way, when there's been conflict in your home? How do you trust God when you're on a long trip? How do you trust God when you're far away from home? How do you trust God when you didn't get things you thought you were gonna get or things didn't go the way you thought they were gonna go? How can you trust God no matter what? And I think the reason that you can trust God no matter what is because two of his promises, and, and I just wanna bring those two promises up. We can find the peace that calms anything because number one, we know that God is with us. Hebrews 13, five says that, it says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And Romans eight says that all things work together for good to them that love God. We can only find peace when we trust God. I know it's a silly illustration, but we trust bridges every day without even thinking about it. We drive over bridges and, and bridges, they're, they're just metal and steel. God is the Lord God creator of the universe. How do we trust a bridge but yet we're not able to trust God? And the reason is, is because we can physically touch a bridge, but it's very difficult to physically touch God. I remember there used to be times when, at night when I was scared, I was really scared and I would go into my mom and dad's bedroom and my mom would let me sleep beside the bed. Now once I laid down next to the bed in my mom and dad's room, I would be at peace and I could sleep. But when I was in my own room, just a few feet away in my own bed, I was scared. What changed? The house was the same, everything was the same. It was how close I was to my parents. It's how close I was to someone who I trusted. 
And that's the way I think it is with God. I think the closer that we get to God, the more peace we have. It's almost like no matter what's going on, as long as I was close enough that I could see my mom and dad, I felt like it was going to be okay. And for you, I, I don't know, but I mean, if you've been scared, when you're scared and, and you're upset, how do you get peace? Do you go hang out with mom and dad? Do you get a big hug? Do you go sleep in their bedroom with them? I don't know. But how about with God? We should be able to trust him because we know that we can trust God no matter what. And it's important that we learn to trust him and we learn to live a life that we trust God. We don't, we don't go around being scared and, and upset all the time. So I want to leave you this today. You can trust God no matter what. Now what does that mean? That means that no matter what goes on in life, guys, God is always going to be close to you just like your parents are. Only God is the Lord God creator of the universe, the most powerful, most awesome God. And He loves you very much. And He's going to make things work out for you. And that's what we're going to be promised is that he's never going to leave us nor forsake us and that he's going to make things work out for good. So you can trust God. And I, I pray that this new year that we start, 2021, will be more significant and better for you than 2020 was. With all the ups and downs we've had with the virus, I pray that this new year will be one that you get encouraged that you can trust God no matter what. I'm just... I'm just convinced that that's the way to have a successful new year. Well, guys, I love you very much. I look forward to seeing you in church, and I want to pray with you right now. And as soon as I get done praying, there's going to be some questions on the screen. I want you to watch those, look at those questions, talk about them as a family, and we'd love to see you back here in church. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we close out this year, Lord, I pray that you will help us to trust you Lord, I pray that you will help us to, to seek you, that you will, you will just draw us closer to you and we have a relationship with you in 2021 that's greater than anything we could ever ask or think. Lord, help us to, to just put our hope in you and that we would have peace. Lord, thank you for all you've done for us and God, bless us with your peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, guys, we love you very much, and be sure to check out the questions.